All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College, AWD 1100 or C Sharp Programming Language class, I've been doing a series of video presentations based on the textbook for that class. And the book, as you can see, is Murox C Sharp 2015. Um, we've already gone through as a class chapters 1 to 3 and 4 to 11. I've done lectures, we're skipping 13. But I've done lectures on 12, 14, 15, 16, and now 17. Before I go on to 18, I'd like to talk to you about a few different things. All right, because some, some of the stuff in the book just assumes that you understand this stuff, you know how to do queries, etc., which may or may not be true. So I want to get you on the road to where you can start to understand queries. All right, first thing I'd recommend, and, and you don't have to do any of this, but if you are struggling as a programmer, I will tell you that there are people who do little to no programming who work in a database capacity at companies who can make a lot of money. And a lot of people find databases easier to work with than they do programming. So this first thing, I found this online. It's from a guy named Joey Blue. And I'm just I'm going to start building this list of resources right you know for you literally as the saying goes come on right before your very eyes all right so this would be the first one all right and you will be sent this if I promise to send you something and I don't. It's not because I didn't want to, it, it's that I forgot. Please, if that's the case, let me know. And I'll make sure to send it out as soon as possible. The second resource, and this is a guy that I have used a lot. All right, his name is Mosh. It's like Hadawanami or something like that. I don't know exactly what it is. But it's, it's Mosh. And it's an MS, it's a MySQL tutorial for beginners. It's a full course. So it's three hours plus in length. All right. And it's also using MySQL, which is it's Mosh Hamadani. Um, not exactly the same thing that we're using, but it's about 95 to 99% compatible. It's free. You can watch him do it. You can play along with him, etc. Thirdly, our old friends from W3 schools have stuff out there. What's nice about the SQL, I'm sorry, what's nice about the W3 schools tutorial is they've already got a database that's built into it. At least that's what I've been told. Okay, I haven't really looked at it much length or breadth or depth of coverage. And there's that. Those are some resources you can start with. So you've watched all those. Let's just pretend you have. Okay, you may or may not be aware, but there is a software product that's out there that's called JS Fiddle. I think it's jsfiddle.net, but I could be wrong. All right, I believe that's it. And when you go through and do this, notice what it's got in here. You can put in HTML, you can put in CSS, you can put in JavaScript and you can run it. So for instance, if I come through here with a JavaScript, let's just try an alert. Hello. And if I come in there and there is a run in here, I don't know where it's run. There's hello. So who cares? What does this have to do with anything? Well, if you're interested, and I've never, ever, ever used this, but I watched a 12-minute tutorial this morning on sqlfiddle.com, 
where you can build a schema in here, queries in here, and then you'll see the results once you run the queries in here. Something else you may or may not be interested in. All right? Now, another thing you may want to do, again, you don't have to do these, is you might want to download a product that's called XAMPP or XAMPP. So I'm going to go out here to XAMPP. I'm going to type in XAMPP download. And it says that it's under ApacheFriends.org. And I'm going to download it, wow, before your very eyes. Go to download. I had it in here, but I removed it because I was running out of room for everything. So what is in here? Yeah, this looks fine. It looks like the latest and well, it's not the latest and greatest. But you know what? That'll work just fine. So I just grab the top one. And there it's loading, and I'm going to tell it to open when it's done. 147 meg. Hopefully it won't take too long to load. The stuff I'm showing you now, I plan on going over in the class as well. All right, it says it's going to open up in about 10 seconds. Opening when complete, so it should be opening at any time. What happens when you download this product? Well, you first got to say yes, I do want to do that, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna accept all the defaults, I believe. All right, and it says important. Yeah, you might get a message like that. I'm not going to worry about it now. Next. I want everything, so next. It'll put it there, so next. Don't change that. And it says that folder is not empty. Please select a different folder. Okay, I already had it on there, but I removed most of it. So let me go out to... Don't want to use that one. Let me go out to C colon backslash and let me find XAMP. There it is. I don't think it's very big right now. 34K in it. I don't even know what's in there right now, so let's look. HD Docs. That's where stuff gets saved. You know what? All I'm going to do is I'm going to come through here and I'm going to change the name of this so it's called XAMP dash old. It's my old copy. You shouldn't have to worry about this. All right, so put it there. Next. Boom. Next. Say hello to your favorite applications. 31, yeah, whatever. We don't need to download. Well, let's see. No, 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 no. We don't need to download any of this. We use cookies, etc. Whatever. Don't know if it's actually doing the install now or not, or if it's done it or not. So. Let's see if we've got a new folder in there or if it didn't make it. Okay, it did not. Lovely. Want to sign in with anything right now? Just want to load this puppy up. Click on an app to start your download, then follow the instructions. Well, what we want is something that's called PHP My Admin, and it's already should be in there by default. This has totally changed from the last time I've been here, so I apologize. I should have looked ahead of time. I did not.
something else. Let's try this. Download PHP my admin. All right, maybe we just need to download this. Let's let's look. I'm going to grab that one. It doesn't matter really which version we use. This should be fine. It's just the top one. So I'm grabbing that. Thank you for downloading. I don't want to contribute. Sorry. Again, I'll tell it to open when it's done. It's a zip file, so I may have to open it myself. Oh, look. We're to install. So maybe I didn't need that one. Let's let's go back, because I'm back to here. Welcome to XAMP. Oh, it looks like it's going to go through the install for me. I'm going to forget about this downloading PHP my admin by itself. Just go to here. Now, you might say, that's fine, Jeff. Why are you even showing us this stuff? Because one of the things that gets automatically downloaded when you put in XAMP is a product called PHP my admin. Not going to do a lick of work with PHP, but it's got built in support, both GUI and non-GUI for you to be able to work with databases. Now, it's expecting that you're using MySQL, where in our class we'll be using SQL Server. That said, the two are almost completely compatible with one another. Sometimes that scares people when I say almost completely compatible and they turn around and they say, okay, what does that mean? That means that there may be some incompatibilities. Like what? Like, I don't know of any. But there might be. Because they're two different products made by two different companies. So I cannot look you in the eye, I can't do that anyway, and swear to you that these two things are 100% compatible when they may not be. All right. So I'm doing a straight download. I have not added anything other than what you get by default. So what we did here was we went um, go to Apache Friends dot friends dot org download xamp it's also called depending on the book you read zamp do not add any bitnami add-ons there's no reason to do that all right almost finished here and I just want to show this to you. This isn't going to be anything that's going to be mind-blowing, mind-expanding, etc. But what's going to happen here is I'm going to give you all at least one database to get started so you can practice with this stuff. All right? And you've heard the saying, practice makes perfect. I don't know anybody who does this for a living who's perfect at it. But practice makes better. How's that? So it's just about finished. I'm going to start looking on here for the where the database is. It's on my E drive someplace. All right, I know it's out there, so I'll find it sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. Sorry, this is taking a little bit of time to load. We're at 15 minutes, so I should be able to go for about five more minutes. This is the last lecture that we'll get for Chapter 17.
but again, I would suggest that you at least look at how to do this before you just blindly, willy-nilly start doing things. It's being able to work with databases and work with SQL is an important skill to have. It's also something you'll be able to add onto your electronic portfolio. And if you download this, as I've said, you will have experience using both SQL Server Database Management System, or DBMS, and MySQL Database Management System, or DBS. All right, it's just finishing up. and finish now okay yeah we want English save <clears throat> okay there it is this is what it's gonna look like when you run it okay and it looks to me I always call this a dog bone I don't know if it really is one but it sort of looks like one you see that all right it says that port 80 is already in use um, if you get that error Okay, then this is what we have to do. Sounds a little bit complex. It's not bad. All right. So what I want to do is I want to come out to my XAMPP folder, which I just added. All right. And I think I'm, I'm going to look for a file that's called php.ini. It's a PHP initialization file. And I think it's that one right there. So it is under XAMPP PHP. I'm going to open that file. All right. Now, I'm going to look in here, and I'm going to try to find where it says 80 for port 80. It's, that's not right because it is in here someplace. Port. All right. 25. There should be two places in this file where we have to change things. And I'm looking in here. I do not did not quickly looking did not see port 80. Now they may have changed this over time. So with where we have to change this, it may have changed from the file that I have I am used to changing. But when I, when I put it in 80, I did not find anything. That isn't good. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to Google XAMPP port 80 error. It'll tell me how to fix it. Actually, the XAMPP installs with the Apache survey to default port 80. If this port is free on your computer, it works fine. If it's in use, you'll get this error, which I got. All right, usually Skype uses this port. How to solve this problem. The solution is simple. Just change the port from 80 to another value. How do you do that? Go to XAMPP Apache. So I'm going to actually put if this works. Okay. So go to XAMPP Apache CONF and open up this file. So I'm opening up the wrong file. All right. So let's try to find that. So I'll move up one. We're back. Let's go back here to C colon backslash XAMP. All right. So we want to, in here, we want to go to the Apache CONF directory. Apache CONF directory and open up httpd.conf. So let's open that. We'll look for 80. There it is. All right. 
So where it says, listen, 80 here, I'm going to change that to 8080. And I'm going to find the next one, and I'm going to change that. I think this is the only other one. So that has changed. This means it's commented out, so don't worry about it. So listen, 8080. Doing that, I don't know, but that's 8080. And somewhere that's 8080. So those have both been changed. I'm going to do a file save. I have now saved the file. All right. I am going to stop XAMP and start it again. So I'm going to say, close the window, and then I'm going to start it again. With that change made, XAMP. There it is. It's still saying I've got a problem with port 80. I'm hoping that isn't going to be a problem. We will see. I may have to go and reboot the machine. So I'm going to do that right now. Come back, show you a little about this, because I'm already at 21 minutes. I didn't want to have another uh, lecture for Chapter 17. I will give you one, okay, just so you can see how to get started with this. Be back shortly.